Hello everyone and welcome. I welcome all you crafters and artists and artisans. This is Miss Darling in the studio and today I want to show you a really chunky, very involved, super duper Japanese style junk journal, art journal that I made. And before I get into showing you that, I want to let you know that I have a kit available which uh, you can purchase and download and have access to much of the imagery that I used in making the journal I'm about to show you. So let me just quickly browse through some of the pages that are in that kit so you can see what you would be getting. We have uh, tags from small to, to uh, large, uh, some coins, bookmarks and with various images on them so this is kind of the same type of thing but the images are all different and another version here we have some cutouts here of uh, oval shapes and and some banners and, and various sundry ephemera to be cut out and then I've got about 15 of these that I made and just a lot of variety that you can sprinkle through a journal along with some extra small tags and you know some of them of our, our woodblock prints and then others are a little bit more modern and then I have jumbo tags which I use a lot of in my own work and so you can see there's going to be a tremendous amount of variety from florals to, you know, geisha and just beautiful women wearing their kimonos and even some, you know, some woodblock, vintage wood, woodblock prints. And then some master boards that you can print out and use as journal pages. And you'll see that I made full advantage of all of these in my own journal and so I'm making these now available to anyone who would like to utilize them. Of course you don't have to use everything and you might want to spread them into different journals depending on your theme or perhaps a color scheme. There's some beautiful uh, fall foliage and you know just there's a lot of variety here and uh, you can just really have a lot of fun. I try to stay away from getting really complicated because that is not the Japanese way. That's not how they do art. It's much more simplified. So these are kind of straightforward and and uh, not a lot of lot of busyness uh, involved in them. And so you can see that. Like for them, you know, you just uh, fold them in half and they could be a journal. I, my, my journals are half the size of a regular sheet of paper, 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. So they're 5.5 by 8.5. And, and that means that all I have to do is fold these in half and they're ready to go as journal pages. And uh, you would, of course, want to either print or decorate the reverse side. But, um, and that's what I do with mine. And you can see a lot of the imagery has lines on it to make it just really easy for people to journal and not, <laughs> not have their writing go uh, at an angle like I tend to do when I don't have lines to follow and, and direct me. So anyway, uh, there's a link in the description box to my Etsy shop where you can acquire this kit if you're interested. So that said, let's move on to the journal itself. So as I said, this is Japanese inspired, but of course, being an American and a Caucasian, it has a little bit of a Western, you know, revamp to it. East meets West, so to speak. And so here was my concept and this is the dangle that I made uh, for on the end and you can take it off. It um, comes with this uh, little uh, 
jumbo clip here so you can easily attach it to the spine or remove and it's got a lot of the fabrics the color palette used within the journal itself some beads up here and just was really fun to make and so that is what I did with there and then I made a self closure out of the same fabric that I used on the cover and here is the cover and this is fabric here it goes across the spine and to the back and you can see that there's no stitching nothing showing here on the spine as to how I put it together and that's uh, I will show you how I did that a little later but then I had fallen in love with this beautiful watercolor painting by some uh, Japanese artist I don't know who and I knew I wanted to make a journal you know with that as my cover and so that's exactly what I've done so we open it up and I chose this uh, grid pattern for the end papers and then I have a coordinating fabric that I used in terms of not only attaching the signatures to the cover but I've also used it throughout the journal as well which creates a lot of harmony and interest I think and so I repeated the the uh, bird on the cover here as my opening cover for signature one and you open it up and then I have this end tuck here where there is some, you know, uh, a large and a small tag and a postcard. And when I make journals, I try to make the left hand page coordinate beautifully color wise and feeling wise with the right hand page so that you get a really nice, beautiful double spread. And I'm going to back out a little bit, I think. Maybe I'm a little tight on this. So we'll just back out a little bit. And so here is my opening pages. And we flip that. And here is a flip out. This is the first time I've really gone into using quite a few flip outs. And so I'm going to move this over here. And so as we pull this out, we are opening up to a really long, nice journaling space. And then if we go the other direction, so we'll move it this way, and we pull it out this way, we have all these beautiful women, uh, geishas, uh, all in a row. And uh, in their gorgeous um, kimonos or, you know, just uh, this one is bathing and um, since this is a g-rated journal I had to kind of cover over with washi tape uh, a little part there in the uh, woodblock print that uh, was a little on the risque side <laughs> so anyway so then this is uh, one half of one of the master boards that I used in making this uh, journal and um, not all of the master boards that you will see in here are in the kit most of them are but not all and that's due to copyrights and I couldn't include everything but I think there's enough there plus you know just using your own individual creativity in what you might put together and so you can see I'm making use of some of the um, ephemera that I made. I, in this particular journal, have made use of a lot of kind of giant pockets. And so here's one of them here. And you can see there's, you know, ephemera that I've tucked in there. A large journaling card and, um, you know, other things. And here's a coin. And uh, so that's tucked in there. And we have this beautiful gal in her absolutely gorgeous kimono. 
And so then moving on, we have this uh, spread here. And this is a bottom pocket. And we have a little um, accordion style <laughs> ephemera here. You can pull out that way and it reveals this beautiful painting. And then on the other side, I just uh, filled it up with some stamping. Just real simple. And it's all just paper clipped together right here. And then I have, of course, more ephemera and writing materials tucked in here. And I thought, well, I ought to include some of my own art. So I looked back in my old journals from years ago and found a few paintings, uh, watercolor paintings that I did a long time ago. And so I thought, oh, that would be fun. I'll include uh, some of those. So this is one of them here. And another, you know, master board. And then we have an end tuck here with more ephemera. And one of the pieces I'll show you, this is a handmade envelope that I made out of some of the leftover master board paper that copy papered and I you know sealed it so inside is a bunch of little surprise ephemera and no one will know what's in there until the owner finally breaks the seal and you can see there's more tags and and um, uh, this is a, a, a little riding thing with some peacocks on the front and so you can see I've built in a lot of extra places for someone to write. But there's a ton of writing space in the journal itself from page to page. Here we have a few more hooks. And these can be uh, journaled on the reverse side. Some lovely Japanese art. And another little car, um, coin card there. And, you know, even in the background, uh, I've included on many of the, of the um, master boards, you know, lines uh, so that someone could even journal right on top of the background. And see, see, there's more lines over here. So we go on. Here's another one of the watercolor paintings I did many years ago. And... Um, you know, just, uh, I thought, fit nicely into the whole theme and style of this journal. And I've got more master boards that I've used as journal pages. And I've used a lot of the ephemera, such as this, which I will include in the kit. I don't think I had printed them out. No, I didn't. I failed to print them out, but I think there's around 50 of these that will be in the kit. And, you know, so it helps, you know, pull some of this color over onto a bland page like this. It's ready for journaling, but, you know, it just makes it look so much nicer when you open it up to this double spread when you have some of the similar colors on both sides and that helps create balance. Here we have a corner tuck and some ephemera tucked in there. This is just leftover a piece from some coffee dyed paper that I cut away and I thought well I'm just going to stick that in there and um, you know just every little bit helps and again this is some um, kind of indigo dyed paper that I purchased and it just you know goes beautifully in here with this colors and so there was a great place to stick a page of that uh, to offset this particular master board and this is the center of the first signature and I always try to make the center spread an image that that continues from the left to the right and so that's why that's in the center. Now we're on the back side of signature one and and you can see I have some of the black and white um, 
circled fabric here that I used in the binding technique and so I've included that throughout the book and that helps bring unity and it was a great fabric to work with and I used it as the hinges on all of my pullouts and so here's a pullout oh I think maybe I did I have one back here well I guess this is the first one so I have a lot of these sprinkled throughout the journal and you pop it on the other side it's decorated on the other side this is a large pocket that I made and you can see that I've tucked some additional ephemera some tags and uh, a writing this is just a reduced copy of a master board and reduced it down and folded it in half and makes a beautiful little writing tuck that uh, coordinates beautifully with the journal and just adds extra space for journaling so that was that more writing space again bringing some of the color from this side over here with these simple little I don't know what you'd call those labels here we have uh, now we've moved in kind of a little bit of a pink mauve lavender uh, color scheme and so of course my ephemera I like to have it kind of coordinate with the rest of the page here's another one of those little envelopes that I made and sealed with a wax seal I'll be coming out with a view, uh, video on how I did all of that flipping it over I had these little Japanese tags that I actually bought off the internet and they are made with um, fabric that is not only used for making kimonos but for something they call a furoshiki I don't know if they still use furoshiki or not but it, it was nothing more than a big square piece of the fabric that women would use when they went shopping and then they would put their purchases in the furoshiki and tie it together and that's how they shopped and kept uh, that was before bags came along <laughs> so anyway they were doing ways to carry their purchases long before we came along with bags and then here's just a little a little um, piece of fun that I added to the paper clip there here was another one of my watercolor paintings from a long time ago an end tuck and then more ephemera and here's another one of those kimono I will just call them kimono tags because that's what they're made out of is is the fabric that's very typical for kimonos and it was a great thing to include now we've gone full-blown pink mauve and here I just did a half of a belly band you probably are familiar with belly bands where they you know go all the way across and then you can tuck them in I think I've got a full one later on but here I just did a half belly band and uh, you know added the butterfly and here's another one of the of the um, kimono tags just you know gorgeous love the Japanese fabrics and you know they have another uh, smaller coordinating fabric on the back and they just came that way I just had to take them out of the package and stick them in and here is a full-blown belly band with a postcard tucked in along with a bookmark and and a coin those are in the kit um, come here and here we have a more elaborate large jumbo pocket that I made and this time this one flips out to the other side and so you open it up 
and and this is what you see and it's important to me that everything stay coordinated and so this particular pocket I made up before I even did the master board but you can see how nicely they work together not only in feeling but in the color palette and uh, then of course there's ephemera stuck up here here's one of the tags I made for it the, this will not be in the kit but um, the various components that went into making that will be and again you know the hinge is this great little black and white or I guess black and beige fabric that I just I tore up into only about half inch increments and that gives me about a quarter an inch that I that I glue on one side and then a quarter inch on the page and that secures them there to the page. Okay, we have another corner tuck. Here's another kimono tag, a beautiful geisha tag, and and a bookmark. And of course here I was emphasizing the red to bring this page in harmony with this one over here which is just a simple journaling card or journal page we open it up and uh, I don't try to do something on every single page I think the eye needs a place to rest and um, so you know as long as I feel the spread is interesting enough on its own I'll just let it be on its own and give the viewer the owner a place to rest I probably will always be the owner give my eye a place to rest <laughs> so now we flip it over and here's a a master board on this side I took and glued a uh, image to a piece of black cardstock when I make a pocket I like them to be a little sturdier than just a thin piece of paper and so you can see then there's places here I've tucked a lot of a lot of things and this was a piece from a master board that I wasn't using so I just folded it in half and uh, yeah it makes a nice little extra place for journaling and I just tucked that right in there here we have another end tuck with a postcard I just took some of the ephemera from the kit and and glued to the front and back and here's one of the small tags from the kit so what I'll do is I'll print off the image on some quality paper which gives me you know a really good um, a, a good image with good contrast but it's on thin paper and that to me does not make a good tag so I always then glue it to a piece of cardstock to give it a little more substance and then turn that into a tag so that completes signature one and now we start with signature two and what I like to do on my signatures is the opening cover page I like to have it um, somehow um, pick up the theme that's on the cover so you can see that I use the single bird on the cover of my first signature so now we get to the second signature and I took another painting by the same artist and uh, blew it up and got the two birds which then winds up being the cover for signature two and now we have another flip out pocket and here's what it looks on the front and some of the ephemera that that I've uh, included in there and these are actual this is actually a cutout that I made with one of my punches and then put a second sheet uh, behind that 
to to get that image there and then glued a secondary image on the front and so that's how I created this one and then you flip it out and this is how I decorated the back of the pocket and just you know simple Japanese design style here's another of the envelopes that I made out of leftover masterboard paper and you can see this one does not have a seal on it because uh, I couldn't find it <laughs> when I went to seal things up but anyway you can see how I've tucked in quite a bit of extra ephemera inside each of the little envelopes and um, so it's kind of nice that this one didn't get sealed so I could show you what's on the inside and so then that just tucks right in here into this giant pocket now if you're using a, a really large pocket like this you want to position it low on your page so that by time you stick your ephemera in up here it's not shooting off the, <laughs> the height of your journal so just remember that uh, the larger you go the more you need to position it toward the bottom of your page to you know you want to have the support of the page behind your ephemera that you stick in the pocket otherwise it just doesn't really work too well and you see that same black and black and beige fabric has been used as a hinge here and we flip that over and we now have this this is a part of a master board and here again is a lighter version of that indigo paper and now we have another flip out and this is going the other direction so you know it's important first that the front of the flip out works well with the page on the other side and then when you flip it out you want it to still look good and uh, so it's a matter of not only designing how you decorate the pocket on the back but keeping in mind where it's going to go in the journal so that so that if you design the back to go with the front then you don't have to worry about whether your back is also going to go with the opposite page because if it if it goes with the front you're not even going to put this on this spread unless the front goes with the opposite page if you follow me so that's what I've done here and of course there's just a lot more ephemera I won't take the time pulling everything out to show you you get the idea and again the large pocket is adhered toward the bottom of the page so that there's plenty of support for the taller ephemera because I don't like sticking my ephemera all the way down inside uh, where it doesn't show uh, I like to pull a little bit of it out so that you you know know that there's something there again this was a cutout that I made with my one of my punches the largest punch that I have and uh, so okay so I punched out paper there and then what I punched out either turned into a coin card or was used like this to beef up the back of of a pocket so this uh, circular piece here came from a different pocket that had that design uh, was made from paper of that and then I used it on here to make the back of this pocket uh, uh, come together a little better okay so you have that same darker calligraphy paper in back here you flip it over and now you've got some of that same paper here on the back So, okay, moving on. Here's just a piece of dyed 
school book paper. I didn't do anything with that, just let it be. And a master board, another master board, and then I had a mistake I had made on a master board with the full length view of this geisha. And so I cut that out and turned it into a pocket simply by folding over the um, part of the each side and gluing them down at the bottom and down here. And so that made a really unique tall pocket and I inserted another one of the kimono tags. Doesn't that look great together? I just, you know, <laughs> really happy with how everything just seemed to come together color-wise and, and looks and feels great and, and has a lot of different ideas incorporated. Here's a little tag that I added to the paper clip and uh, I should say a little dangle and uh, yeah. So then here's another piece of the indigo paper and obviously when you have really dark paper uh, no one's going to be able to journal on that satisfactorily. So I thought, well, what can I do that's different that I haven't done already in the journal? And this was a piece I punched out with uh, one of my die cuts using some kind of thin chipboard. And I've had it in my stash for a really, really long time. And I thought, well, that would be great. It's very Japanese looking and I'll have some really nice contrast with this dark indigo background. And it pulls out some of this coloring feeling. It's not exact, but it doesn't have to be. I think it blends very well. And that was just a perfect touch for that particular spread. On the reverse side, of course, you know, you, you have a problem with that on both sides. Sometimes one side is a little lighter than the other, as you can see here. And so, but still kind of a difficult page to journal on. So uh, I have a video coming out to show you how I made this, but uh, it's just a, a, a quick, easy envelope to make and a lot of fun. and. So I just inserted some ephemera in there that kind of went with the coloring of the peacocks, taking up a little bit on this reddish orange there in the two ephemera pieces. And so you, you see how, how it all can tie together and look, you know, fabulous. And here's a little dangle that I made some while ago. And so I tuck that on. And uh, yeah, so that's how that came together. And here, you know, it's just another side tuck using some of the calligraphy paper. Here is a an envelope I had made out of out of um, very similar uh, calligraphy paper, a little smaller characters, and um, uh, you know. Let me just talk real briefly here about when you try to do a Japanese journal. And if you're not from Japan, you haven't lived there, of course, you're not going to be familiar with their writing. And um, you may be looking at some calligraphy and think it's Japanese and it's really Chinese. And well, how do you know the difference? Well, the main way that I tell the difference, because I can read very little Japanese and I can't read any of the kanji at all, but I can read what's called hiragana, and that's their basic, I don't want to say alphabet, because they're really um, syllables, uh, not letters. Anyway, I can read that, but you know it's Japanese paper when you look at a, a kanji, let me try and zero in on this. When you look at a kanji uh, character, which is taken from the Chinese, the Japanese will more often than not tell you what, what that character is saying. 
So they do that by putting small hiragana symbols out to the right side. They're always on the right side of the kanji. And of course their writing it goes from top to bottom and from right to left opposite what we do here in the United States. We go left to right and we go horizontal. Well they go vertically uh, from right to left. And so this these two little characters right here tell you what this kanji, what it means. And so you can tell right away whether it's Japanese or if you're looking at something that's Chinese. Now the other, the other thing about working with Japanese writing is knowing what's the top and what's the bottom. So if you're not familiar with their writing, you can't read any of it, you're not going to know which way, which side is up and which is down. And I think it's really discourteous and dishonoring to put something upside down simply because you didn't take the time to, to figure out what was right side up. And so I don't know how I can really give you an idea. First of all, look for the little small characters on the right side. If they're on the left side, you'll know you have it upside down. Please, you know, if you're going to make a Japanese journal, pay attention. And, and uh, if you can't figure it out, you know, you can send me a message and, and uh, uh, an image and I'll be able to tell you. But um, I think that's just really important and I don't know of anybody who's ever discussed that before. Okay, moving on. We've got um, this, uh, I think, just kind of carried itself. Uh, I let this alone. And here I have, there's quite a lot going on here. We have an, uh, a side tuck here with some a tag and some writing paper. Behind that is some coffee dyed paper. And now we have a, a f accordion flip out. And so we're going to pull it this way. And this is what we have. Let me see about pulling out a little bit more. Okay, so this is a die cut that I made and so is this over here and that helps tie those together and then if you pull it out the other direction we have another one here. So there's plenty of writing space here on this accordion pullout and uh, yeah so then uh, this is part of a master board here and a person could journal there as well so I'm not going to take much time on these type of pages here we have another bottom pocket with you know, a postcard there. Here's a coin, a little bookmark uh, stuck in there, and coordinating very nicely with this kimono clad lady. Uh, looks like she's in the midst of getting ready to make a kimono, or maybe that's an obi. Obi is the part that goes around the middle. So here is the center of Signature 2. As I said, I, I like having imagery that goes all across from left to right without inter interruption. In the art world, we called that a diptych. And um, so a diptych is where you had an image that continued on the second one. It was just framed. They were in two different frames, but the image itself continued. And uh, so there, and now we're on the back side of Signature 2. 
and we have another flip out and oh no that was supposed to go like this it had flipped over to the other side well I thought that was a little plain so here is this one again using the black and beige here's another kimono tag that just went I don't know I just really lucked out because <laughs> believe me I didn't do that much <laughs> for planning but uh, you know it's just really nice when things come together and you're able to find what you want to uh, finish out and so then when you flip this out hey, here's what that looks like oh and here uh, is just a little simple bunch of leftover papers that that I put together in t into a little tablet, put a piece of fabric on top, and sewed across the top to secure them. And so I tuck that in there. A corner tuck with more ephemera. Again, just trying to balance the colors on both sides and make a pleasing double spread make it pleasing to the eye a visual feast if you will and now an abrupt change to a completely different color palette and I had this little postcard and then I um, miniature postcard I glued down there and just left it simple and you know just less is more and very Japanese. Flipping it over, uh, we have a part of a master board and another corner tuck with more ephemera. Here I took some of the calligraphy left over and just folded it in half and made a little writing pocket there, you know, to stick in. Now we're back to another flip out. So here's here's how the it opens up. And this was another painting I did years ago. And I was I was looking on the internet and found this photo of this is a gotta be way out in the country in Japan somewhere where they still had the little houses with the thatched roofs. You don't see that. They're definitely not in the cities anymore. It's all concrete in the cities. But you can still go out to the deep country and find the old traditional houses with the thatched roofs. And this happened to be a village at the base of Mount Fuji. So I attempted this little watercolor on it. It's not very good, but <laughs> but it was good enough for me to... Uh, reduce down and turn it into a, a postcard. So I stuck that in there, which I thought coordinated nice with these lighter blue. And so then you flip out that pocket, and here's how I decorated the back side. And some little tags I uh, glued on at angles and, and uh, you know, glued down their uh, faux. Now, what do you call those things that stick out of the tags? Anyway, you know what I mean. So that's what I did there. And another simple um, design back in the pinks. You see, we we're, we're really have a mishmash of color going on in this journal. But I love it. And so here's more ephemera from the kit that I used to pull these pages together, another master board there in the background. Flipping it over, we have a, a belly band here with more uh, ephemera. Some of it, like this tag here, is in the kit. This one is not. And, you know, just trying to come up with different ideas and looks for each double spread. And that It keeps your interest going and, and uh, trying to have little surprises all along the way. 
and here's another belly band with two large um, postcards that I made using vintage wood, wood block print reproductions a label here with just calligraphy and again you know you look for the little characters on the right side of the kanji so that you know that this is Japanese and not Chinese and here is a smaller um, little die cut that I had that I stuck here and that is similar to the one I did you know obviously uh, probably a, maybe even a broken off piece from uh, something else but you see that is a little bit of a repetition of idea that I used earlier and when you do that as long as you don't overdo it adds unity to your journal so then just you know more writing spaces simply done some uh, this is a the other side of that uh, school book paper and uh, you know just more ephemera and here we have and some indigo master board and so I wanted to you know do a a um, pocket that carried those same colors over so you see this in the background here and and uh, the indigo in the foreground you know it's a flip you know you got indigo background here foreground here you got the you got the kakemono in this muted rust here in the foreground over here it's in the background so let's flip it out and see what we have so that's on the back side of the pocket and uh, you know of course there's an indigo tag in here of course and uh, you know just some fun things and we're winding down this is uh, I think the um, almost at the end and here's another of the envelopes and uh, this one I don't know if this one is sealed or not yes it is I can feel it back there I won't pull it out and uh, uh, wanted to bring in this lovely large red tag here to pull some of the red over onto this side you know because you wind up maybe you've made decisions in the front part of your signature that go together nicely but you're trusting that uh, you're going to be able to resolve issues on the back side as well and so what I wound up with of course is this this side here that is you know got the tan and the red flowers and then I have this light indigo page over here and how am I going to marry those two together so that it feels good and looks good and so that's why bringing in uh, more ephemera that has the red in it was one of the solutions bringing in a miniaturized version of the of the lined paper there you know it, it added more place to journal but the main thing was it brought some of this color over onto this side so I hope you see what I'm doing in terms of making everything be designed and coordinated uh, in a lovely way so now we have our last flip out and here I had this vintage postcard that had been in my mom's things and I it doesn't have a date on it but I can tell by looking at it it's gotta be um, probably 30 years old or maybe more anyway so I thought that's a nice home for that and uh, stuck in a little extra ephemera this is a side tuck I made to go with the well actually it was a unused portion of the paper I used to make this 
large pocket. So I stuck in some more ephemera and another writing thing used from some of the pa unused paper and you flip it out and so you can see how how it is all color coordinated from one side to the other and get away from thinking things have to match we're not looking for matchy matchy we're looking for blendy blendy and so uh, as long as your colors are similar um, they can be in different values you can have something dark with something lighter but it's from the same family but they're different values and so we look for that in good design good art and um, I think that's just really important and so then this is the last page of signature two and we come to the inside back cover and the outside back cover. Okay, so there you have it. I thank you for being with me. I hope you learned something, found some inspiration and um, some guidance, not only from, uh, you know, the Japanese standpoint, but, you know, from a color and design and artistic standpoint, I try to teach that as, a, as I go and make things. So, if you stayed this long, I thank you for sticking it out with me. And uh, remember that much of the imagery that I use to make this journal is now available in my Etsy shop. So if you're interested, pop on over there. There's a link in the description box below the video. And um, I thank you for doing that. And uh, so uh, that said, this is Miss Darling calling this a wrap. Bye-bye.